Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome to another episode of Did You Know Business? Alhamdulillah, today we have an amazing guest. And before I tell you who our guest is, what are we going to be discussing about? We're going to be talking about sustainable finance and investment. But before I introduce our guest for today, make sure you get a coffee and we'll be right back. All right, alhamdulillah, as you all know, I said, go get a coffee and we'll be right back. Now we're going to be having our guest for today and he's none other than Atahiru Machido and he's an expert when it comes to Islamic finance. He's a trainer and as well as a consultant and he has done so much in the space when it comes to Islamic finance in Nigeria. Sheikh, you're welcome to the show. Thank you so much, brother Shraif. Barakallahu I call you Sheikh because you're the Sheikh of finance. <laughs> Good to have you on the show, brother. How do you do? Alhamdulillah, because you're right. Mashallah. How have you been coping with the pandemic and the left, right and center? How's it been? Of course, it's a new world everything is new with respect to the mm. covid so definitely we've already amended our life with respect to that so and life Allah. goes on may Allah make it easy for I us good to have you here so a lot of people uh, you know let's go straight to the point right mm -hmm. a lot of young people a lot of business individuals they want to go into businesses and a lot of people think there is no need for them to look at the you know islamic finance in general uh the benefit it gives and i got to realize that a lot of people who are into islamic finance are not even muslims are even non-muslims right who enjoy the facility enjoy how it's going and likes of it my first question is um what does islamic finance means today in the conventional world well, thank you so much, Brother Shurem. And uh, of course, like you mentioned, there are a lot of people that are non-Muslim, but yet they are into Islamic finance. Mm. Now, if we understand what the is Islamic finance principles are, it is actually embedded into all the main religious that we, religions that we have, Abrahamic religion in particular. If you go to Christianity, Judaism, Old Testament in particular, as well as Islam, of course. But of course, it is Muslim that usually practice it. And that is why globally it is known as Islamic finance. Mm. Now, it is because it deviates from the norms of the conventional finance in terms of who or what to finance with, res with respect to the principles such as no interest, because interest is forbidden both in Old Testament as well as Quran. Really? No Old Testament and Quran? Absolutely. If you go to uh, Psalm, Deuteronomy, uh, Leviticus, they all have verses related to forbidden of uh, interest. Wow, amazing. Now, if you look at another Islamic finance, it's not only related to Islam, it's also related to promoting or at least forbidding some other means of uh, some other uh, uh, businesses, mm. such as uh, anything that is adult, uh, that is uh, related to um, uh, de decaying the moral of the society, mm. such as anything for no graphy. And of course, if you look at the religions, both Islam, Christianity, they also uh, shine away from the absolutely, anything to do with the absolutely. pornography. Absolutely. If you look at also anything to do with business that have a kind of deception in them, mm. such as uh, uh, anything that is deception in, in embedded into the business, of course, is also forbidden in Islamic finance as well as the the Christianity and other things. So mm. it is not actually surprising to see many people that are of course very much aware they go into Islamic finance even if they are not Muslim mm. because they they follow their religions as well as their ethical nature in fo in promoting something that is good for the society and of course going away from things that are uh, harmful to the society. Mm. So you know in this situation whereby you know it's amazing that you even brought, brought uh, scriptures mm -hmm. and uh, I never knew that in these scriptures they are placed that it has been forbidden so when people say Islamic finance the first thing that comes to my mind you know this is just finance for Muslim and even some viewers as well when it comes to them no Islamic finance ah you're trying to Islamize these are trying to Islamize them uh, when what do you say to people what is that one thing people need to know about Islamic finance that will make them understand the beauty of this kind of uh, action now if we look at or we x-ray the Islamic finance mm. we will realize that it is only promoting businesses that probably in our natural life we do that mm. businesses and the contracts related to how we do the Islamic finance are contracts that we do in our day-to-day -day lives mm. you have a house and you want to get get it to somebody else to rent the house that is an ijara contract that islamic finance or islamic banks usually do and they call it ijara 
if you want to if you have a business and you want to call a brother to come and and be into that business and manage the business while you provide the funding mm. that is mudaraba mm. if you have a business and you call your brother to also partake into providing capital into that business and you also provide the business and you manage it that is musharaka now these are all things that we are doing in our day to day lives mm. but of course it is standardized and put into the financial sector so that it can have all the inclusive in a more standardized ways amazing mm. amazing you're the ceo of 117 capital and of course the name is amazing i'll still come back to how that name was coined <laughs> you know you're the ceo of this beautiful company uh what do you do as a as an entity we are fund asset and portfolio management company licensed by securities and exchange commission mm. so just like banks we can go to the public to the institutions and collect their funds mm. and we manage the funds but in a sharia compliant businesses uh. the only difference we have with the with the banks is that you cannot give us money today and tomorrow you come and write check and collect it we are expecting if you give us money you will leave it for at least some sometimes maybe at least a month two or a year or two years depending on your plan so that is why we are fund manager, but licensed by Securities and Exchange Commission, meaning we are a player in the capital market, not in the money market licensed by, by CBI. Uh, so people can come to you, you know, uh, do you have like categories of people that can come to you or as a young person, I want to go into business, I heard that you're fund managers, I can just come to you? Or what we cater for every need actually, every person's need. Uh. If you are a retailer, a retail investor, we also have products that can suit anyone if you are a high net worth individual we also have if you are institutional investor we also have because we can do mutual funds registered and licensed by securities and exchange commission that can even take as as low as five thousand per, per unit mm -hmm. so meaning we can cater for the institution for the retailers we also do high net worth to the extent that a unit may be 50 million it depends on the product and it depends on the profile of the investor mm, amazing you know recently i've had interest in real estate and i call myself a real tour now and you know, on my instagram you know i just changed the 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 the, the status there and i put real to and the likes of it because i felt a lot of people are going into real estate and i've seen so many people who are into real estate mm -hmm. now there there's so much money mashallah tabarakumullah in that aspect and if you look at deeper from a more spiritual point of view you are creating you know homes for people to stay a very conducive environment for them to live mm -hmm. which is an integral part of our society now how does islamic finance relate with real estate mashallah rabbi like i mentioned to you islamic finance finance activities in different contracts depending on the which contract the stakeholders mm. will take if for instance is a real estate developer approach a financier who is doing islamic finance like 117 capital mm. we sit down with the company and we decide on how are we going to which contract are we going to take one we have a contract like i mentioned which is musharaka and that is main uh, partnership we look at what exactly the real estate developer is going to bring on board he is going to monitor all the necessary uh, uh, development construction he is going to probably get some buyers to come and buy the assets and whatever we have while we become the prom the financier mm. maybe the real estate developer may even have his own land his land can be valued and provide a monetary value related to that and say this is your contribution in the entire project site while we fill the gap with respect to that, meaning we are providing the financing for the development of the real estate. We can also do an estisna, meaning for the first one, meaning the asset are going to be shared according to what we will agree. Mm -hmm. What, how many number of houses will be yours as real estate developer and how many will be ours as financier. We can decide on that and how are we going to exit, are we going to get somebody to buy it and we take our profit and go. If that is what we agree with the real estate developer, we take it. Mm -hmm. The other contract is probably is as Istisna. The real estate developer needs funding and approach 117 Capital or any financier that is playing into this particular mode of financing. Mm -hmm. He may decide, the, the financier may decide to say, I will take it as an inventory, so I want to buy this particular asset. How much do you sell a house? You have so so, so number 50, 50 million per unit, for instance. Here is my 500 million and I need 10 units of that. 
constructed within 18 months delivery to me however within this construction period if you have anybody that is interested in buying it because i know how much i buy it from you then i can also sell it with a profit markup mm. together with that one that is alice Chisna. there are many other things we can do that is with respect to the real estate developer mm. but in the real estate developer there are optakers that may also be interested in buying the house so that they can stay in the house but probably because of the cost they may not pay at once and they may decide to pay a, uh, a commitment amount to the real estate developer but they may be hooked in there without making the balance of payment right. they can approach like our like us 117 capital and we can sit down and agree we are going to fill the gap but if we fill the gap meaning we will be co-owners of the house mm. and by the time we be co-owners of the house we will agree that you are going to stay into the house and be paying rentals for our portion of share in that particular house and gradually we'll be selling a unit of our our portion of our unit for many every year you buy a portion until a certain year when we are going to, our unit is going to be zero while you will take the entire house mm. so we can do it in different form of uh, financing we want we can do an ijara which is a lease contract we can do musharaka which is a partnership co-ownership of the house and other contracts we can we relate with yes. either to the real estate developer or to the optaker who is interested in the house. Subhanallah, this is really amazing. You know, uh, I don't, I don't know much about this. <laughs> so you know, I'm, I'm glad I have you on my show. Thank now, you. this is a personal question. If the people who are watching benefit, mashallah, tabarakallah. Inshallah, now, yeah. I want to go into real estate. Mm -hmm. What do you advise a young person like me to do first, as a Muslim and as a young person? Of course, before you do that, you have to purify your intention, what so, you intend to do. But you know that the real estate is a trust business where people are going to entrust their money and expect you to perform. Mm. So purifying your business with good intention is the first thing you need to do. Then of course you sit down and strategize how are you going to get your fundings related to it. Because probably if you are going into it you may, you may have a gap in, in terms of your need with respect to the funding. Then how are you going to get the funding? You look at the necessary sources of funding and then go into it and put all your papers on the table together with the partner who is going to be and agree on how you are going to share the profit for instance if you come to us actually and you tell us that you want to go into real estate first thing is what do you have in terms of your competency do you have any asset do you have a land for instance that you have and you want to develop it yes you do have a lot then that, will, that is when we are going to sit down with you and say which kind of houses are you going to build mm. are you going for the mass housing are you going for the middle class or are you going for the premium depending on the categories of the people you want to uh, you want to attract to mm. do that then we can sit down and put all our figures together and then we'll see how we can finance you and we we'll go together t based on the necessary contracts we will sign with you Smala, mashallah, you know you said something that really struck my heart and that is about sincerity you know uh, a lot of us what we do is that we forget that in everything we do sincerity of purpose really matters a lot and I ask that he gives us the ability to maintain sincerity of purpose in whatever we're doing mm -hmm. you know it's mm -hmm. difficult but what I got to realize that one have to train themselves in this aspect Absolutely. you know coming back to my next question Islamic banking and the conventional banking rather or Islamic finance and uh, you know conventional finance and like so which do you think is better with respect to the two I decided to concentrate on Islamic finance because I think it is better mm. better in many senses first of course whatever the Islamic bank uh, Islamic bank whatever the conventional bank is financing as long as it is not deviating away from the principle of Islamic finance Islamic Islamic finance can finance it mm. and of course they have a kind of uh, uh, the human 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 face mm. in their activities not unlike the conventional bank that I don't care I'm going to transfer the risk to you whatever happens to you whatever happens to your business so be it you have to come and pay me with respect to Islamic finance it has a human face mm. that based on the fairness and justice it will equate whatever all the necessary risk related to the transactions mm. so we'll look at it and say okay based on what you said you have I think it's better we go into partnership with respect to partnership meaning you are not actually going to have the risk yourself the risk is going to be shared according to the financial institutions and yourself mm. or decided to say okay you want to actually buy an asset then Islamic Bank can buy it in a form of a lease or in a, in a, in a form of cost plus the profit mark of uh, sales but it has a human face in whatever it does in line with the Sharia and in line with the Quran SubhanAllah, that means Islamic banking is in line with our reality absolutely yes mm.
is like I mentioned to you and like I explained to you mm. is even our day to day activities we do mm. people if you go to for instance uh, the east there are a lot of people that are selling vehicles but they do have their relatives probably in Netherlands and other places that they already have this kind of uh, flood vehicles mm. and they ask them please can you send me a car yes I can send you a car then pay the money based on the pictures you can see mm. and then you ship it and you clear it or whatever it is that is a contract in Islamic finance called Salah mm. and of course they are doing it in, in their day-to-day -day activities and yet they didn't know that they are doing Islamic finance but it's contract or you know that based on even the the tradition of uh, Eastern people, for instance, the 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 people that are more of trading activities, that is the Igbos, mm. they do take their brothers to stay in their shops and mm. look for the shops, look after the shop for them. Mm. After they reach certain stage, they take whatever they think is fit for them and set another shop for them so that they can go and be mm. independent look at it it's just like a mudaraba they are doing come and do this particular business for me after a certain period of time i'm going to pay you a certain amount and set an office for or and set your own shop for you that is mudaraba they are doing so there are a lot of traditionally activities we are doing in terms of our businesses that are in line with sharia only not actually formalized in a financial sector mm. Hmm. You know, subhanAllah, you know, around the globe too, there's a lot of uh, Islamophobia when it comes to uh, anything that is associated with Islam, even if it's good, people think that nah, this is not something I should go do. Do you think that, because I, from what you've said, Islamic finance is in line with uh, our day-to-day -day life, is in line with our reality, and as Muslim, yeah. we care not just about other Muslim, but humanity at large. Absolutely. Now, in this situation, do you say that it would say ethical banking or ethical financing and Islamic financing, are they the same or these are two different things? Well, in different jurisdictions, some jurisdictions they call them ethical financing mm. and they believe it is Islamic financing they are referring to. Mm. Some jurisdictions they call it participating banks, for instance, in Turkey, and they are referring to Islamic banks. Mm. They all call them all normal. But here in Nigeria specifically, for instance, once upon a time we had ethical funds such as IBTC ethical funds but that was before we even start doing more of Islamic finance activities in Nigeria mm. and that ethical funds actually it has its own definition of ethicals not Sharia compliant per se mm. because they do invest into IBTC shares bank shares and of course it deals into interest so it cannot be Sharia compliant per se but they call it ethical because they don't actually invest in breweries, they don't invest in tobacco, they don't invest in other things that are harmful to the society according to their definition. Mm. So in Nigeria, calling it ethical may not actually give the absolute meaning of Sharia mm. or Islamic finance. Mm. But they all draw the line from Islamic Sharia. They all draw the line. And I give you an example for IBTC fund, ethical funds they came prior to even Securities and Exchange Commission giving their rules on Islamic finance. Mm. Now, it is only in 2008, March specifically, that we started having Islamic Fund, which is a public fund by Lotus Capital. And that mm. is why they call it Lotus it's an investment, Halal Investment Fund. Now, prior to that, we don't have any Sharia compliant, but we do have ethical funds. Mm. But since after that, SEC decided to come with the rules and regulations on the Islamic funds and since after that because of the governance structure provided by SEC now most of the funds that are coming as Sharia compliant are really Sharia compliant. Amazing. You call them Sukuk funds, you call it uh, uh, investment or fixed income funds, they are really in line with the Sharia because in the SEC rules and regulations they even mention that whoever comes as a fund manager to provide a mutual fund for the public to invest must make sure that that fund has Sharia board that will look at the activities of this particular fund and the mm. fund manager to make sure that it is really doing Sharia compliant activities and it will give certification on annual basis after doing the audit of the activities of the fund in order to ascertain that it is Sharia compliant. So mm. since then those that are coming as Sharia funds or Islamic funds are really Sharia compliant because they do have governance structures by Sec. You know, amazing. This is beautiful, and uh, we ask that to bless you, Thank and we ask that to increase you more <laughs> knowledge. Subhanallah. I, I think you know there is a need for people to be more aware, to have a proper 
and a deeper understanding of Islamic finance. And I think, uh, you know, here, as did you know, we'll try to make that effort, inshallah. Mm -hmm. You know, just before we end the show, there's a question I have for you. And this, you know, affects, uh, you know, we as Muslims here in Nigeria. We see there are a lot of funds given out there in, in this world from the CBN that people go to benefit. Mm -hmm. And every time we want to approach that fund, we have been told, nah, don't do that. It's yeah. haram. You go, you, you trade the path of Jahannam. Oh. So everyone is scared, right? You know, this is not haram. This is this is haram. Sorry, this is you know not good for ourselves. Do you think that the federal government is making an effort when it comes to making some of these funds much more accessible, you know, in an ethical way and likes of it? And what do you think we we should do as a faith, uh, as we belong in Islam, that you know we're not allowed to take funds if they are interested in it? MashaAllah, Rabbi, this is a very important question and it has been asked by many brothers actually. But it's better we should understand that prior to, within the, before the COVID-19, mm. most all, all the intervention funds from CBN were more of conventional intervention funds. Mm. But during the COVID and a little after that, Central Bank of Nigeria came with guidelines on Sharia compliant intervention funds. And they are available if you look at any other funds that CBN has about nine different funds and they have also another mirrored one that is Sharia compliant so whoever is interested such as for that agriculture and some other things whoever is interested can approach a non a, a non-interest bank such mm -hmm. as Jai's Bank, Taj Bank, uh, Santros Bank or Sterling Alternative Bank these are the banks that are allowed by Central Bank of Nigeria to bring people that are interested in those Sharia compliant intervention funds and access these particular funds. Mm. Alhamdulillah, we are also aware that in PENCOM, pension fund administrators were asked by the regulatory authority, which is the PENCOM, in mm. 2019, that they should make sure they have multi fund structure in their appropriations. And in this multi-fund structure, they must have non-interest funds, meaning those that are contributing their monthly contribution into their pension with the pension fund administrator, they can write a letter to their PFA and ask their PFA, I'm aware about this particular fund and I don't want after I retire, I will still be enjoying the return on the interest interest yielding instrument. Therefore, I want you as my PFA to move my money to the non-interest funds. And the non-interest fund immediately, if PEN comes in, in on your marks, get set, go, they have to move all the money to that particular fund. And we are also aware about the Federal Mortgage Bank of Nigeria, which is another one, critical one, because it is mandatory for every civil servant to be deducted from his salary certain amount and give Federal Mortgage Bank as National Housing Fund. And this National Housing Fund provides housing financing at a single digit. But unfortunately, because it is com conventional, interest-based, our people that have been contributing are still going away and said we are not interested because it is uh, we are cursed if we go into that aspect. But we are very much aware now that Federal Mortgage Bank of Nigeria is doing everything possible to see how they can also bring on board or issue Sukuk so that those people that are interested can come through Sukuk or come and do rent to own, which is also Sharia compliant. So Alhamdulillah, gradually the things are changing in terms of the atmosphere of the entire industry and it is also bringing mirrored one as Sharia compliant in every aspect. SubhanAllah, thank you so much, man. This is so much information. MashaAllah, <laughs> Rabbi, thank you so much. Thank you so much for being on the show. You know, Alhamdulillah. And uh, we, we hope to have more of you to discuss, you know, on, on financial issues. Inshallah, because we tell people that, you know, we, we always preach to people to be good. But how do they fund the goodness? Of course. So of with course, this, Inshallah, I think it will go a long way. May Allah bless you. Thank you so much, sir. Dear viewers, alhamdulillah, we've come to the end of this episode. This is Did You Know Business, and that was a CEO of 117 Capital. You've known what you really need to know. Alhamdulillah, now you can drop the coffee that you've been taking and try to also focus and try to uh, remember whatever we've discussed. You can take it back and take it forth, but try to implement what, you have, what you've heard. Like what uh, Atahiro Machiro said, he said about insincerity of purpose. When you watch even this clip, let that sincerity of purpose be with you. And we ask Allah to make life easy for us and, and the entire globe. May Allah bless you. Until the next episode, we'll leave you in the care of Allah. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah wa barakatuh.